So in this video, we're going to look at the hierarchy of control and specifically looking at a worked example. This is quite a, a, a sort of a famous image uh, that people have tended to use in training sessions to talk about hazards in the workplace. First, let's start with defining what a hazard is. A hazard is something that has the potential to harm you. And in this particular image, you can see there are lots of things that can harm you. In fact, it's quite a very unsafe place. We have, for example, in the first one here, a lady using a circular saw. And you can look at the picture and you can see there's quite a lot of issues here where there is a potential to harm you. There's no uh, personal protective equipment. The, there's no guards on the circular saw. And there are several examples in this. And I'm going to go through them very quickly. The second one you can see is the chap who is walking towards a dangled hook and not wearing a safety hat. And the third one is where someone is lifting a drum and there is a potential to cause back injury and dropping it on their feet as well. The fourth one is quite a strange one. There's someone who's smoking a cigarette. There's a no smoking sign above the head and they stood next to a container or several containers of flammable material. And last but not least is number five. I say last but not least, there's probably several more in here. You can see there are puddles on the floor and this is of course a slip hazard. Now, if we were to look at this in terms of just one particular example, let's say we look at the one with the lady using the circular saw and let's apply our hierarchy of control. The hierarchy of control can be considered in its basic form of the acronym ERIC P and E is for elimination, R is for reduction, I is for isolation, C is for control and P is for PPE. I went through that very quickly but let's apply in this specific example and see how we can prevent the hazard from happening for this young lady on the circular saw. Here we look at the risk evaluation side of it and right off the bat if you've done the course with me, you'll know that there are two things that make up the risk equation, and that is consequence and likelihood. When we look at this picture and we look at the hazard, we can obviously have an impact in terms of the consequences and the likelihood. But let's look at it just from a hazard perspective and the consequences. What can we do? Well, we can. the most desirable option, of course, is to eliminate the risk completely. And we can do that by buying finished planks directly from the supplier so that the cutting isn't done on site. Great, fantastic. Got rid of the risk completely because the likelihood becomes zero. The next option is substitution or replacement. You can use a handsaw instead of a circular saw, but there are potential ergonomic issues that will require further review. It's important to emphasize that just because you do something in terms of substitution, you may have done something in terms of risk reduction, in other words, consequences and likelihood, but there is also the potential to create other issues. So we need to look at each one separately. We mentioned I, and I is to do with isolation. What can we do here with this lady and cutting of the, of the wood? Well, we can limit the number of people exposed by only allowing one specified person to use the saw. But that's probably the norm anyway. We could barrier off the area where the bench circular saw is being used. And that will mean that that will stop people going towards the lady and potentially distracting her and maybe both people can get injured. In terms of C, where we talk about control, we've got quite a few options there. We can engineer, we can do something in terms of engineering. We can install a large red protruding stop button that can be operated by the knee. And we can also do other things. We can also do administrative. So, for example, we can do a procedure. We can have increased or better supervision, identification of training, etc., etc. The administrative part is where some people tend to focus quite a lot. My, my specific objective will be to go higher up the chain and in terms of elimination, reduction, isolation. And last but not least is the least desirable option, which is PPE. What can we do here? The bench circular saw operator could wear thick gloves, for example, as PPE. 
If I was to do this for a company, I would always recommend that we go higher up in terms of risk reduction. And that is the hierarchy of control should really start at the front end with elimination and then work down towards PPE. There is another option at the bottom called D. So it's Eric PD. Whilst I would like to think that this is an option where D stands for discipline or documentation, try and prevent further additions to the bottom of the hierarchy of control. Whilst there are options, you really want to try and go up in terms of risk reduction by applying more robust hierarchy of controls. So that was just a quick overview on a worked example with the hierarchy of controls. There is a lot of opportunities here in this particular working environment for improvement. I hope that your place is nothing like this, but if it is, the only way is a positive way in terms of applying hierarchy of controls and risk reduction.